What's going on, everybody? Time for another YouTube recap. As always, let's get into it on the X. So uh, this morning, real short post. We had a short bias today, pop to short. Uh, we had a bunch of different targets here on the lower side posted. I was looking for an earlier five minute uh, tennis may loop, but that's okay. Went a little bit higher, not a big deal at all. Uh, so let's get into it. So all targets all the way down. I had to 50, uh, 19,200, uh, low 200s. And we actually passed that. So let's take a peek here. All right, let's go to the NQ real fast. Boom. So on the five minute chart here, we had a very interesting tennis may loop, right? And uh, this is that little area I was talking about looping right here. Where's the old draw tool here? Where is it? Where is it? It's hiding. Too many monitors. There we go. All right. So whenever we see a peak into like a major resistance like this, plus two standard deviation away from a standard VWAP. This is your standard VWAP right here. This is your plus two. We had a push back into this little bit of a loop here. Came back down, got under that 10 SMA, and then popped and popped. And we were still looking short, right? But if you've seen the algorithm this morning and in my private chat here on our Discord, we did talk about uh, a lot uh, this morning about how we were going to get a most likely pop to drop and stay outside of the fib range and then down. I'm gonna go bring that up here in a sec. <clears throat> uh, excuse me. So, to the old, uh, right here. So when we bring this over, we talked about the max short low is 19,215s. We set this at 7.30 in the morning central. Um, we'll hit at some point right now, five minute 10 SMA loop in progress should scam shortly. So it's gonna press higher, right? It's gonna scam up and push up. Um, usually a long trap scam here to fail later, okay? So again, I'm explaining the entire trade, 7.30 AM. Um, blue SMA right here, breaks below first time and runs. And this gives us our little picture of the 10 SMA loop. And um, yeah, that was the call. So as I said, I um, started going into the algo and explaining so on and so forth for our premium chat. So let's get into it. So my call was we were gonna scam up a little higher, pop to short, and we're gonna run off this little algo right here. Little tiny guy today, uh, nothing too crazy. So what I did, I like to do a high low. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove most of these other ones right here, and then we're going to rebuild them so we can talk about it. So pop to drop. Why did we have a pop to drop outlook? Well, because of this uh, Elgo and this Fib, and mainly because of Thursday, which we'll get into in a little bit. But the thesis was pop to short and staying on the short side, and we had a really big over under that was going to be 465.57, right? If we maintain above there, we're most likely going to squeeze back up and start the, the run into July. No big deal. Uh, but we didn't, right? Head to the downside. So let's take a peek at what we could have did to help us out with the fibs here. So the algo high low is right here. The 10 SMA loop back here, 7.30 in the morning. Um, actually, it's a little earlier. 7.30 in the morning is right, five minute. Okay, it's not gonna show as well in queues. We'll leave it for after. So the queues um, push back up, right, into the 1618. And what do we know about Fibonacci boxing? Well, we've boxed out our high low, like always, push up into the 1618. That's always first tag, right? That's usually a first tag short scalp for us, unless we see something um, that tells us not short, uh, comes up into the plus two view app here, very aggressive move. And um, <clears throat> one of the big things to note here is that MACD all through pre-market, it did not look good. We we're actually getting these lower highs down here and it went into a breakdown with bigger oscillation waves at this open as well. So we hit the 1618, we break down into the fib box and I call a short to the pop short, anything through here and down. So we get the big short, we come out and then we break through the bottom of the box. Okay, great. So that means we just fib out backwards the same jam so now we have fibs pointing up and down right little sandwich for the fibs anything under the 100 fib right right here bottom of the algo we're gonna see downside continuation right and all we had to do is look at the mac um today very easy one for the indicators and um let's bring it over here just a little bit so i can show you guys so here in the pre-market when i'm talking about is the lower high with higher highs. We can't really do that, right? So that's called divergence. When we have a big push up late, like two, three in the morning, way back here, um, that was the highest point of the MACD. But price action went higher as MACD came all the way down to the center line and then put in lower highs at open, right? Telling us that, hey, we're gonna most likely have an opportunity to pop here, uh, skim up a little bit and then head back down. Well, 
Uh, the Fibonacci extension targets go from uh, 100 all the way down to 666. We actually su superseded that, which is pretty crazy because this is a very tiny algo. So the move today uh, was very, very, very wide. It was very great. So we came out of the Fib box, pointed to the downside, 1618, 2618, 4236, 666. We had every single Fib, uh, the downside. Now, with that being said, that was the confirmational over under. We really didn't have to go through a whole bunch of other stuff today uh, to find that confirmation. Uh, our buddy Spy over here had an opportunity to come back down under that 10 SMA and then chase down the 50 SMA as well. And let's take a peek here at Spy, also boasting a beautiful little algo here this morning. Pointed to that downside. And again, I'm trying to get in here so you can see it a little easier. This guy right here at 6 a.m. Central. Now, this guy at 6 a.m. Central came up, hit a weekly fib that I had. That was a huge resistance point that we teach here. Comes up, fails the pre-market hold, right? And then heads back down. But 2618 was hit on the upside. So if we do the same sandwich where we just draw the same fibs up and down, you're going to notice we topped out at the 2618, okay? So we push back up out of the fib box. And I said, we're going to scam up no matter what. 2618 breaks back down into the fib box. Well, now that we're in the fib box, that's going to be the directional pick and what we're waiting for for confirmation, right? So the oscillation indicators and how I use them, I come into this as a trend, right? And I use the uh, box on, on RSI and Mac uh, to help identify that. And when the RSI had been chopping through the center line, I knew that it was just most likely going to be a non-event and that literally it was just sideways uh, for most of the pre-market on SPY. We had one push up, but notice when we broke down into the FIB box right here, it snapped into the bottom and just went lows, lows, lows. Well, we had a very big increased sell wave here that we seen very early on SPY actually after that big crack and I said short all pops. Now we broke down into the FIB box. Here's your range, literally that small. Okay. And we came to this large candle that snapped through all targets. Okay. No big deal. 1618 to the bottom side hits, comes back up, and now it's stuck underneath the algo. You see the algo right here? She's stuck underneath that very first, last candle on the left screen here. That's the high low of the algo candle for the fibs. So you notice it snaps, gets inside the box, stuck, stuck. So you got lower high number one, lower high number two. We're starting to fail. MACD and RSI both giving us signals that we're going to progress lower. So we pointed those fibs to the downside and utilized targets uh, associated with that Fibonacci, right? And we had uh, outside of the box, we walked it down and we had 50 SMA daily. And most likely we're going to get a melt candle here that we called. And then that was coming in uh, pretty hot. And again, this thing way past extension came out of the weekly candle. Teal is the color for me on weekly. So if you see a break 542, 42 here, that's pretty nuts. Washed it, rejected confirmation, wash, wash, came back to it, right? That's a very big level. So the magnet of price action to come back to this level, astronomical. Um, so now where the psychological catalyst came in, I do want to cover real quick here that Thursday was the engulfing candle, right? Let me just clear the set like we always do. Right on. Start up from the old freshie. Now, this guy right here was the end all be all. And I'll tell you why the psychology was so easy today for the pop to short. We have an engulfing Thursday candle. Okay, high low. We're just going to leave that regular fib, doesn't matter which way you point it. The breakout or breakdown of Thursday's candle is going to dictate trend, right? So let's take a peek at what intraday does with just one Fibonacci. We're going to go to the five day, five minute. We're going to pay attention to Thursday's high low. And then we'll come back to the Elgo that we had also called last YouTube video right here said that we needed a fill, okay? So we're gonna fib out Friday's pre-market algo from the last video and the last update. And I'll make that neon green, so it's a little different, a little easy to see. And these are the two fibs to work with, okay? So in the last few days, you're going to see Thursday's high-low comes into Friday, okay? Holds the golden pocket, very tight consolidation. That's the golden pocket of Thursday's candle. Pushes back up fails the breakout to Thursday's top. That's right here. So we can't get to Thursday's top, but we do create a higher low. No big deal. Pushes back up. Now here's where Friday's algorithm right here comes in. So Friday's pre-market algo, very interesting, pushes up and found out we hit a 1618 and almost tagged Thursday's highs. Okay. Now remember we needed a breakout breakdown. Doesn't matter which way it went. The fib box right here dictated the whole move. Okay. So price action, dead on Friday, pushed into the 1618 from Friday's algorithm right here, okay? Friday, well, it's black, my bad. Wow, there we go, Fuchsia. Um, this algo hit the 1618. And what do we know about hitting the 1618? We have an opportunity to 
pull backwards, come down to the 100 fib or lower. And what I noticed and what we pointed out this last time is the fib box on the bottom here left out price action. So when we came up from Thursday and Friday into the resistance of the 1618 at 468, because again, we pointed the fib from Friday to the top side, here is the target T1. That is 1618, comes back down just from a simple fib, simple as that, hits the 1618 reverse. And today, coming into that, what did we notice? Well, we have a lower high now. We're no longer getting higher lows, right? The Thursday candle, we needed to make a higher low or higher high from yesterday's candle, right? So we opened up and we had zero higher highs, zero double tops. We made a lower high, thus confirming more of a pop to drop day, right? So what does that mean? Well, I'm going to delete the daily now. And this is what Friday's algorithm and the or Friday's algorithmic um Fibonacci is left with. And here's the high low. Here's the box. Hundreds right here, zero right here. But what did I say about that fib box, the golden pocket to the zero right here? There was no data, right? So we needed this to fill. So once we got a lower high, that is a great signal right here saying we're probably not going to go much higher. And then our Elgo, the pre that we just covered, really helping us to the downside. So what happens when we break inside 464 and six cents? We finally have an opportunity because we're in the box now. Okay. We're in the box. This is 1618. We just covered, right? This is an extension. It came out of the 100 fib into the 1618, fell back down into the box. And what does that tell us? If we're stuck in the box, we're coming back down to the bottom of the box potential. Okay. So the whole thesis of the trade was anything under 464 six cents was going to fill the 0% fib because we never had price action to the right of that Fibonacci, that algo. So we'll go back here to Friday right here. This is the lowest point of Friday hit. This is the golden pocket. Here's the high low of the algo. We're missing all this data on the bottom of this algo. This algo has to fill price action all the way through. Okay. So that's where we got that from. I'm not going to give out any more secret information about the algos or how to use them because we have a ton of premium stuff here in the chat. I just don't want to give out because a lot of great members and great community pay for that. So as we come into the 458 target now, we're going to close right around here. We're not going to do anything else because there's no catalyst. Now, moving into the next day here, we have a low break, right? So we're just hovering around that 100 email. It doesn't mean we're going to break and continue. It's all going to be dependent on data, Powell, so on and so forth. We're always reactive to the data. We're never going to predict the data and pretend. Um, but gap number down, gap number one, gap and go to the downside. Gap number two, gap and go to the downside. If we um, are still, you know, cooking to that downside here on Qs, great. Spy, on the other hand here for the daily chart, little different setup because we're coming from a little bit of a different gap. We have a small one and a very large gap into the 50 and notice that the 100 EMA is still very far away. Now I'm still calling for the 100 EMA target from all time high pullback because we shied it last time. And I'm looking for at least 8%. That's only seven just shy of for the 100 EMA right now. So we could actually dwindle a little bit past that. We'll see if you notice my weekly target is down there too at 2618, a little farther past the 100 EMA. Not really looking for that one quite yet, but I'll take what we can get. Um, so the zero line to the Mac and just how we treat this as intraday trading, we're coming into that zero line to the Mac. So if this doesn't want to cross through the zero line and continue, we could see something more or less shoot back to that upside, like here, where you notice a big cross had happened, rolled over on the daily, shied the 100 EMA, green level, green line right here, 100 EMA daily. That's one of the biggest tall tail signs. So when we crash next, we're coming back to the 100 EMA. We're going to come back and tag that because we haven't tagged that and we missed it. Now look at the Mac, it looks familiar, right? But the RSI does not. So the RSI actually has more room to go right now in the current standing, but right now the MACD is right around that zero level for the bounce. And notice when we get that zero level bounce, we come through and we could come down a little bit more, but we end up kind of bounce chopping away and we could bounce near that zero line and not really give us too much extension because we're not really gonna fight trend. We're still on higher low, higher highs. We're still, you know, it's not any kind of macro a uh, huge turnaround, but let's take a peek real quick. Just zoom into that RSI. That RSI has, still has room to the downside for cool. And the Mac is just getting to its zero line for the break even. Okay. So we could easily see a little bit more downside, maybe to the hundred EMA before we start the bounce, but data dependent. So let's keep an eye out for data. Let's see what it does. Uh, if any video here gives you a little bit of value, you want to trade with us live, we got links in the description. We got top step codes. We got apex codes, reach out on Twitter X. If you want to, I am always around. So for tomorrow, the prediction is if we do not come back down and fill the gap, because we're obviously tantalizing this gap fill, because last time we were down here, this is how close we were to filling the gap. We are still not filling the gap at 537. That is a big daily gap. We need to get that filled. Now, 
interesting scenario. We got some big earnings after hours. Now, if those big earnings take the poop and we actually leave a gap right here, that is going to be a double gap, which means opening up next right here tomorrow, we might actually end up underneath 537 if earnings go bad and however the reaction is, doesn't matter to me, I don't play them. So if it comes back down, we're actually gonna leave a gap that has never filled at 537 and then price action might do another gap and go, we're actually gonna walk ourselves back up in that scenario of pre-market. Okay, pay attention to that prediction. I'll show you guys tomorrow. All right, guys, take care. Again, if you found some value in this video, links are in the description. Take care. If not, we'll see you on the next.